Hello and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I recorded a video on a variant Sudoku called Between One and Nine Sudoku. The channel had been ticking along at three and a half thousand subscribers and maybe four or five thousand views a day on a good day. And suddenly that video um, went crazy, got 350,000 views so far and uh, was incredibly popular. So, um, interesting. Now, some of the reason for that might have been because that we titled it um, a Sudoku with only three givens. How is that even possible? So I might try titling this one, a Sudoku with only four givens in the grid. How is that even possible? We weren't really trying to con anyone. We were just explaining how it was possible to have a Sudoku with uh, three givens in the grid. And as you can see here, there are four in the grid. But very importantly, this Sudoku has these different rules. Um, it's another between one and nine Sudoku. So these numbers outside the grid represent the sums of the digits placed between the one and nine in that row or column. So for instance, in this row here, we can see that the sum outside is 25. So between the one there, we can see where that is, and wherever the nine is, the numbers in between that add up to 25. So that much we know. <clears throat> And a lot of people did ask us where could they get more of these because they liked that variant. And not surprisingly, I think it was very good. Um, but I'm afraid we don't know. There aren't, it's not a puzzle that comes up regularly. There aren't books of between one and nine Sudoku or websites devoted to it. As far as I know, they're just created occasionally for competitions. But I managed to find this one from the 2015 World Sudoku Championship. So I'm going to have a go at that for you. It's another one. Do feel free to just copy it down and have a go yourself first, because I'm sure it'll prove an interesting solve. If it gets selected for the World Championship, it's probably a good puzzle. And uh, we'll see how we go. The only other one I found is another random one on the web. Might try that at some point as well. But there really isn't a big stock of these. So uh, enjoy yourself with this one if you can. So I'm going to have a go at it now, see how I get along. And uh, let's start. Now, there are no zeros or 35s around the edge, and they would have been helpful because a zero shows that the one and nine must be next to each other in a row or column because there are nothing is added up to between the one and the nine. And 35 is actually the maximum because one and nine add up to 10. The numbers in between them, two to eight, add up to 35. So if one and nine are on the outsides, then you get a 35 on the outside. But there are no zeros or 35s here. The best we have in terms of restrictive numbers is this two, three, four, and two. Now, they must all indicate that there is only one digit between the one and nine, and it's a two, four, three, or two. Um, the reason we know that is because for two digits to add up to even three or four, they'd require to have a one in, and there can't be a second one in the row or column which has a one or nine. So they will be useful. But in fact, maybe this 25 might be where to start. Now, <clears throat> we know where the one is. For numbers to add up to 25, if you took 8 plus 7 plus 6, that's 21, you could add a 4, 8, 7, 6, 4, and then have the 9 here. Or if the 9 was here and these numbers added up to 25, then you'd have 35 with the 1 and 9. This would have to be a 10 to make the 1 to 9 sum of 45. So that's not possible. So we know the 9 is here. These four are eight, seven, six, and four. Just work that out. And therefore, three and five are a kind of pair at the corners, at the, the ends of that row. Um, and as I say, we know four, seven, six, and eight go in here, but we don't know in what order. Now, looking down at the 17 here, um, we know that the nine has to, I think, either be here or here. Now, that's more of feeling at the moment. 17 is too big for two numbers, so the 9 can't be here. Um, it's too small for it to be here. If it was here, we'd have 17 plus 1 and 9 is 27, plus the 3 is 30, and we could have 8 and 7 outside. So it could be there. So we don't, we're not sure whether the 9 is there or there. Um, 
And that's, I think, not all that helpful, unfortunately. So I'm probably missing somewhere where the 1 and 9 are more helpful. Where would that be? Oh, yes, look, this 4, as we said, that proves that there's a 4 between the 1 and the 9, and we've placed that 9 there. So that's fairly straightforward. There is no other way to make up 4 other than a single 4 between a 1 and a 9, because 1 and 3 is impossible because there's already a 1. Now here in this row, we've got 27. That means outside the 1 and the 9, numbers add up to 8. And that can only be two digits. So those two digits there must add up to 8. The 9 must be on the far end. Now I'll explain that again. 27 is the total of the digits between 1 and 9. 1 plus 9 makes 37. The two numbers not between the 1 and the 9 make 8. That can't be three different digits because that would require a 1 amongst them. So it's either 2 and 6 or 3 and 5 and they go here or here. So the 9 must go here. Now can we use... Ah, we can use that 9 to determine which of these 9s is correct. Clearly not this one. So we can put that 9 in there. Now we worked out that 17 plus 9 plus 1 is 27, plus the 3 is 30. The other two numbers in this column must be 7 and 8, and they must be in the cells outside the 1 and the 9. So we are making progress as we go. Now this 2, we remember that that's one of the numbers that must be sandwiched by 9 and 1. And that is quite interesting because we've got a 9 here and a 9 here. The 9 in this box must be in these three cells because of that 9 and that 9. It can't be here because of this 9. Now, if it was here, then it would be 9, 2, 1. And that's impossible because the 1's there. So the 9 must be here with 2 and 1 beneath it. They can't be above it because both 2 and 1 are impossible in those cells. So that's given us good help there. Now in this row we've got 920. Now that's interesting. It can't be just, it can't be here because you couldn't get a 1 in there. It can't be here because two numbers and then the 1 wouldn't be able to add up to 20. So the 1 must be either here or here. Um, we don't necessarily know which, I don't think, because 20 is kind of in the middle but at least we know that there's a 1 there. Now we also therefore know, because of this 9, this 9, this 1 and this 1, that these three cells contain a 9 and a 1. And we know from this 2 that they're bet the 2 is between 9 and 1. So they must be 1 and 9 in some order up there. Um, now that's interesting for these two numbers, 29 and 23 because one of their 1 and 9s in both cases must be at the end. So only one of them can have, oh no, they could both have the other end of the 1 and 9 in the same box because they'll be different. Okay, that didn't tell me as much as I was hoping there. Um, 1, 2, 9. Certainly, obviously, it's helpful to get these 1s and 9s placed. Um, we've dealt with that too, that four. Ah, oh, this three. This three was the other single number that's sandwiched between one and nine. Can't be here on this side because that would put the nine here and there's a nine above it. So it must be one, three, nine like that. Now, this column has a 20 in with a nine here. Can't be those two cells because they couldn't add up to 20 and we couldn't put a one there. So the one must be below it. It must be three cells adding up to 20, which I think have to be eight, seven, five and the one at the bottom. So I'm actually going to fill in all of the five, seven, eight possibilities because I think they may be useful. <coughs> and we also have the three, four, six possibilities up here. Now that could be three. This could be 3 and 6 only because there's a 4 there. This one can be only 4 or 6 because although we don't know which of these end ones is a 3, we know one of them is. So that's quite useful. Now we've placed this 1 down here. Where does the 9 go? Well, it can't go in this box. It can't go next to the 1. So it must be in one of those two cells. Um, do we know which one? Well, let's let's write it in as a possibility first of all in those two cells and then see if we can tell where it goes. 
Now the number in this column is nine. So if a nine was there, it would kind of have to be either four, five, one, or four, two, three, one. And that both of those would put a one in this box and that's impossible. So that's not a nine, that is a nine. Um, and because this column is eight, this is not a one. That would be far too many numbers to make eight between the nine and the one. So we can get rid of that one possibility, put a one here. Now that's quite interesting from a lot of points of view. I mean, I think we're going along very well here. Now this nine, these two cells have to add up to nine and the nine is here because the two cells can't be nine themselves. So they must in fact be three and six because we've already got a one, two and four in the column. So three and six go in there. Um, this nine is in a row that has eight between the nine and the one. Now this cell can't be included because three cells would require a one in. Um, what I mean is this can't be the one, we know that. This can't be the one because three cells would require another one in. So the one must be here and it must be eight between them. Um, similarly with this eight down here, we've got a nine here. Um, now we know from this one and this one that one in this final column must be in the bottom box. So it must be there with the eight between. Um, this row says 28. We've got the one and nine place. They add up to 38 with the 28. We must have a seven at the end there to make 45 for the row. And that fixes this seven and eight pair in this column because that's the same box with a seven in. Um, now eights in column eight, we can't have an eight here because of that eight. So it must be up here. That means we've got a five, seven pair at the bottom. And because of this seven, we can work out which way around they go. Um, then we've got five and seven to fit into these two cells. They can't be here because of this five and seven we've put in. This one can't be a seven because of the seven over there. Five and seven. And then we've got two, four, five in there. This can't be a five anymore. We've just put a five in the box, so that's a three. This is a five over here. And now we're gradually working out where the various pairs we'd isolated earlier go. This has to be a six, and this is the seven. Six, eight, five, one, two, seven, nine. These are three and four, although I don't know the order yet. Um, <clears throat> So making some quite good progress now. This out of five, seven and eight can't be the five or the seven. They're already in the row. So that's the eight. Um, these two must be five or seven in some order. Now, what, what clues from the outside have we not used yet? This nine, we haven't used that. Now, one has to be here. That's the only place left for a one. So it has to be three and six to make the nine, it couldn't be three, two, four, we've already got a four in the row. So nine up here, the last one, I think, oh, it's up at the top, isn't it? That's figured out this one and nine pair. So if that this column has a 29, plus the nine and one is 39, the bottom number must be a six to make up the 45 total. In this column, we've got 23, um, plus the 9 and 1 is 33. These nut cells make up 12. And I think that's going to have to be 3, 4, 5. No, it could be 3, 2, 7. That's not quite right. Okay. Don't know there yet then. Um, but we must be able to figure out some of the rest of what's going on. We got, I think we've got all the 1 and 9s in now. Ah, in this row, we need to make up 14. We've got 1, 7, 6, 8, 9. So it could be 4, 3, or 5, 2. Mm -hmm. Ah, they've got to involve a 3, because those two cells can't be a 3 because of that one. So these are 3 and 4, and that puts 5 and 2 in the left-hand box. And there's a 4 there, 4. That's resolved that 3, 4 pair. We've got two six to go in there. 
and that is five and seven in some pairing. Now we worked out that these three cells have to make 12, so it can't be a seven here or that would be a one. So that is a five and that's a three, that's a seven, there's two there. That seven has made that into a five. Six, three, seven, six, nine, two, three, one. In this column, we've got an eight and a seven to put in, and the seven already in this box resolves those. Nine, eight and three to go in here. And we can finish off that column. Now we can finish off this box. That six that we just put in resolves that three or six pair. Um, so we probably need to use one of the clues again. Not sure. Actually, we can finish off that row five and eight because there's a five down here. Um, these are four, six, seven, but we don't know the order. That's four or six now. Three, nine, five, one, two, six. Oh, the only place for a two in the central box is there. Um, eight, one, two, oh, three and six has been resolved here by that three. So now we need a four and five, three, nine, two, five, one. One of those is a six. So six goes here because it couldn't go here or here. And then we can finish off this row with four and two. Um, we need five and four in that column. Seven, six. I'm still trying to do this on Sudoku terms. Maybe I still need to use the constraint somewhere. Ah, oh, yes, in this row, 27 plus the one and nine is 37, plus that three outside them is 40. This must be a five to make 45. And that's the, the final bit of kind of logic that we needed to finish off all the remaining bits. So we can just use normal Sudoku elimination rules to complete the puzzle. And there we go. That's between one and nine Sudoku, another one. I hope you did have a go at it yourself because that was quite an enjoyable one. I liked the way that these small numbers were really important earlier. They, they helped get a fix on it and uh, solve the puzzle. Another entertaining one, I think. Um, I hope it's okay to revisit the same variant. Do let us know if you'd like to see more of this type or more of other types. Um, we're, we're very happy to kind of go that way. Thanks very much for watching. Do, do subscribe if you haven't already and do feel free to uh, sponsor us on Patreon. We like that as well. Thanks very much and uh, hope to see you again on Cracking the Cryptic. Bye.